Peter Barlas here, cardiologist. Now, a commonly performed test, both in general practice but also in cardiology, is one called a 24-hour Holter monitor. Let's find out what this test is all about. Now, if you have symptoms of palpitations, and what are palpitations? Well, we've had a separate video on what they are, and the description is linked below. But essentially, palpitations is the sensation of our heart beating. Ordinarily, when our heart beats at, say, 70 to 80 times a minute, we won't notice it. It does its job in the background. However, in some situations, we may feel our heart beating, fluttering, pounding, racing, or missing beats, skipping beats. And these are symptoms that you might have experienced at one stage in life. Well, a 24-hour halter monitor gives us a very good idea about how your heart is performing and beating, the heart rate, how fast, how slow, what are the patterns over the 24 hours, daytime, nighttime, particularly when you're sleeping. Is there any irregularity? Is there any, for example, atrial fibrillation? which is an irregular heartbeat. And we look for all these particular findings on a halter monitor. Now, it doesn't always pick a problem. And I commonly get told that when you know, the patient has had the halter monitor on, that they felt no particular symptoms. However, it can be useful. And it's a very simple test to perform. So let's look at how this is done. Now, a halter monitor is non-invasive, but there is some preparation that may be needed. We ask you to wear some comfortable clothing when you come in to the center to have the halter monitor fitted, and it is applied by using electrodes that are attached to the skin, often around the chest and the tummy region. There are various types of monitors, but normally they might have up to five leads, and these leads are positioned on these little sticky dots called electrodes. Now, because the electrodes have to stay on with the leads for 24 hours, there is a bit of preparation needed to ensure there is excellent contact between your skin and the electrode. So there may be some preparation needed. For example, if there's a bit of hair around the area, well, then a razor blade may be used to shave this off. Then the skin is prepped and cleaned, normally with an alcohol preparation. And to improve the contact between the skin and the electrode, there is often a very fine abrasive paper or like a sandpaper, a very fine sandpaper that is often applied to the skin to improve the contact with the electrode. And then the electrodes are connected to the leads and they are connected to a small little recorder. And that recorder is variable. There are different models and brands around, but they can be quite small as you can see here. And that is discreetly worn under your clothes, and then you wear it for 24 hours. We ask that you do not get it wet, so do not go swimming, do not have a shower, do not have a bath. So have that done prior to you fitting the halter monitor. And I encourage my patients to carry on with their normal activities. The worst thing you can do is while having the monitor on, is to have the perception that, oh, I'm being monitored, I better just lay low and not do much. Well, no, I encourage my patients to go out and about and do their normal things, going to the gym, exercising, going for a walk. And really, we're trying to get a glimpse of what your heart rate is doing during the course of the day and night. We also ask that you write a small diary and keep tabs of any symptoms. And these are memorable symptoms that you might feel, flutters, palpitations, skipped beats, racing beats, missed beats, or feeling lightheaded, feeling like you're going to pass out. These are very, very important symptoms for us to correlate with what is going on on the monitor itself. So you wear it for a period of 24 hours, and then the following day you will go back to the same center and have it removed. And then we analyze the data that has been recorded over that 24-hour period. The analysis is very detailed. It provides us with a you know, second to second assessment of what your heart rate has been doing. We get an average heart rate. We get a minimum heart rate, a maximal heart rate. We look for any extra little beats that you might be having, what we call ectopic beats. We look at the frequency of these. We look at the heart rate regularity. Is your heart rate regular? Is it irregular? A condition known as atrial fibrillation. 
we look for any skipped beats or missed beats where your heart is slowing down a bit too much. And that's also another common reason why you might have a halter monitor fitted. If you've had a funny turn where you've become dizzy or you're about to pass out or in fact you do have a, a blackout and you don't, you're not aware of what's going on, well then the halter monitor can be a useful initial test. But as I said, sometimes the monitor just doesn't pick up any major changes and that can be very reassuring on its own. Sometimes, however, if symptoms are persisting, we may elect to monitor you for a slightly longer period. And there are various newer types of monitors that allow 48 hours, 72 hours, or 7-day monitoring, and even up to 30-day monitors. So a halter monitor is a very simple test. It's a commonly performed one used to evaluate symptoms of palpitations and heart rate disorders and rhythm disorders. And it's very simple to wear very non-invasive, gives us very useful information. And of course, as always, please always check with your own doctor about any symptoms that you may have. And hopefully you found this useful. Until the next video, bye for now.